Okay, here we go. So playing playing a character I have basically no familiarity with whatsoever, and also an archetype that I'm not uh, incredibly comfortable with, which is Gwen. And you know, as a rushdown character, you know, obviously as a as a player who plays characters like Rook, uh, Midori, <laughs> a little bit, um, Onimaru, these are all these tend to be uh control style characters or at least i think about them as control style characters and uh yeah gwen is exactly the opposite of that um so not my not my most comfortable element uh, knowing how to be uh aggressive and close things out very very quickly especially having a uh, timer on my health total so having fairly low health myself. So the logic of this matchup and why Gwen is advantaged in it is that it's very difficult for Persephone to get uh, a lockdown. And uh, Gwen has a lot of options that beat 3.0 speed, uh, 4.0 speed, which are her mistress's command and uh, slow jack, uh, respectively. The difficult part of the matchup, though, is uh, once Gwen is actually on the ground, she has very, very few answers uh, to Ace-Ace. Uh, her only attacks that beat Ace-Ace are her queens. And uh, once she's out of those, you can quite effectively set up uh, checkmate situations uh, as Persephone. As, um, on Your Knees does do, I believe, 4-chip? At least three chips, so it's not it's not uh, an insignificant amount. So I go for the attack. Um, I just didn't want to throw into what looked like attack spam, and uh, wanted to try to undercut perhaps a greedy slow jack for the knockdown. Not even sure what I was, what I'm planning to hear here. Yeah, I mean, I've got 13 cards in hand. I'm very likely to be getting aggressive. And um, yeah, he happens to have Ace Ace uh, to deal 16 damage. He's just finding as much damage as he possibly can, as safely as he possibly can. And uh, I should have recognized the fact that on 14 cards, uh, with him at around 9, it's fairly likely that I'm going to try to go for some kind of aggressive move. It might have been uh, better served by trying to dodge in that position. And with 14 card hand, uh, he's got a queen that I know about, and I figure, eh, in this situation, it's probably more likely that he's going to try to go for a, a throw attempt, to be honest, uh, because he's got the queen to try to pressure with. So I think I counter throw him here. Just hoping I don't get seven thrown. And in fact I do, which is extremely sad for me. <laughs> so I, I I stand up, but I still you know I I have to power up. I'm I'm in, at my hand cap. Uh I know he has a queen, so I've got to contend with that. I have two tens in hand, that's fairly nice. Uh I've got queens of my own, which I'm going to play fairly recklessly. Managed to hit a king here. I've got an insane amount of damage in hand. Immediate face down. I basically can't respect this. <laughs> yeah, so I, I figure it's probably a joker, so I just throw two aces on there rather than throw my entire hand away. Does end up being a joker, uh, so I still lose the, the two aces, but... Didn't want to leave it entirely. Didn't want to entirely respect things. Manages to get a queen uh, with this, which is very unfortunate. I've got to navigate to uh, the end of this turn without drawing a card so he can discard those. Uh, so I basically play a queen to keep a queen. 
managed to deal 10 damage. Nice thing about this matchup is, uh, you know, if you ever do get in, she's got, uh, Persephone starts with zero life. So, uh, you know, it's fairly good. <laughs> you, can, you can chew through that zero hit points pretty quickly. Okay, and I do end up uh, missing the opportunity to power up uh, to get rid of that uh, effect and lose a queen that way. Walk into a dodge. I'm going to joker this just in case. Yeah, can't afford to be taking basically any damage uh, from here on out. So I just have to be correct. It keeps getting queens on my knockdown, which is really, really unfortunate. Um, pretty big mistake, I think, uh, to get rid of those tens. It is my only triple, so it's the most efficient way to get those aces, but it's going to leave me in a position where I can be checkmated quite handily. Get rid of some more throws, uh, just to leave the option of wake up throw on the table. I am going to wake up queen, I believe, here to undercut a possible knockdown queen. What I should be thinking is that he probably wants to conserve the queens uh, for neutral, because they're going to shut down my aggression there really hard. Um, so I can probably be a little bit more cheeky, try to open up with kings instead. Yeah, if I, if I opened up with a king, I would have gotten quite a lot more mileage out of that uh, than I end up doing. Still, I, I managed to even up the, the hit points slightly. Put him at 53. That's basically two Gwen combos, especially with the amount of damage I have in hand. But two Gwen combos away from, from dead. I just need to find my way in. At this point, I have the opportunity of dodge into 22, which is fairly good. I could also try to dodge into just knockdown. I suspect that dodge or throw is very likely from him at this point, which is very, very strange why I, I go for a nine throw. Um, if I had just gone with a jack um, with chains of ice, I could have put an incredible amount of pressure on him. But I guess I was too worried about that uh, dodge was more likely. Kind of a silly, silly option to play in retrospect. Again, 14 cards in hand, so very unlikely that I'm going to do something passive like block, which is why I'm considering it. But the other unlikely thing is for me to have the fourth queen. I put that on the table. Again, missing an opportunity uh, to really blow him up with some combo damage. What I should be registering at this point is that he has played really, really unsafe options against me a couple of turns in a row. Um, and the only reason you do that is if you have a Joker as backup. So I'm really not reading the signs. I'm, I'm spending too much time actually trying to learn the character and get a feel for uh, what he's worried about. Stick the three out there because he has been throwing. Catch something. Feel really good for a moment and play into this face down for maximum possible damage. Because I need to close things out and as a result, end up walking straight into a second joker. Now I still have a ton of damage in hand. So it's not like I'm out of the game by any means, but things just become much, much more difficult. Draw the fourth six. <laughs> My options are basically a uh, king, jack, or a throw. I opt to try to go for a throw, I think. 
instead. Yeah, take 16 and knock down. And this is uh, pretty much over. Uh, especially if, yeah, he picks up an ace. He's going to power up. He's got 10 cards in hand. He can power up for another ace, definitely. I've powered away my 10s, so I can't even threaten uh, to block with a 10. Put all my aces in hand. Just in case I survive this. Should be thinking about blocking with the 2. But I opt to try to go for a hard throw punish, I think. Yeah and uh, instead get pretty much checkmated. Uh, There's very, very, very few things I could have done in that position to, uh, to escape with my life. And he ends up taking a very, very strong game one. So that, that was one of my advantage matchups, quote unquote. <laughs> yeah, I am nobody giving me some shit. <laughs> So, uh, once again, I have, or no, actually, I think, yeah, no, so I'd picked this particular matchup and the next one. So, picked Jaina into Satsuki. I really should stop thinking that I understand Satsuki. Um, <laughs> it is the lesson I should, I'm, I'm taking from, from this tournament. <laughs> I don't believe I've done uh, very well at all uh, in this matchup. I start off with a very awkward hand. Uh, learning from my previous match, I figure, okay, I'll go with a, uh, a much more block-heavy strategy here. And uh, promptly block a joker, which is fantastic. Really good start. <laughs> Pick up a queen. Got a, a, a few more options now. Um... What I should consider is the fact that it's fairly likely he's going to try to throw, uh, given I did show him the 10 block, just because, I mean, Satsuki likes to go for throw anyway, um, but, uh, like, Jaina's really like showing you the 10 block and then throwing with it next turn. Uh, I probably should have had that somewhere inside, you know, in the back of my head. So I go down a little bit, he's on a three card hand, which typically means uh, throw, throw the Satsuki. Uh, but I expect him to anticipate the throw and go for something else and instead get thrown for it. Um, I figured this is probably fine. I'm not in much danger of taking, yeah, he throws away a, a king for very little payoff. Um, Satsuki is still a 70 health character. I'm starting to accumulate cards. I've got three fives I could convert into aces. I have the possibility of using, unst uh, of using unstable power once I'm back in neutral at some point, possibly on a speed of the fox turn uh, to set up a attack dodge mix up or normal throw. Um, briefly check to see if it makes me stand up if I play it, but it does not. It's just your opponents. I opt to go for the safe thing and just even block. Had a quick check at his discard. Ooh, yeah. Ten throws me on knockdown. Reading that I want to play defensively. I have not really put out any aggressive move. Except for that ten throw. Throws into twelve. Yeah, I'm kind of questioning that, uh, that play. Um, Trying to think of what he could possibly have in hand that would necessitate that kind of uh, combo. But it's fairly likely, I think, that uh, he can throw his way out of that hand or that he's going to. Instead, I get queened for my troubles. But on, again, on a four-card hand with queen, I'm not too, too worried about this. He does manage to find a six, which, uh, he get, again, he's not been converting into incredibly... Uh, big damage off off of these uh, combat wins, but I have not won combat yet. <laughs> so, you know, after that first turn block Joker, 
Uh, it's all been downhill from there, so. Got to find my way back in this. I've got a queen. Possibility of setup. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How, how, how do you think it's going? <laughs> So I feel like, because of the way I've been blocking, he probably knows I'm stuck on kind of an awkward hand, but I also think that he probably thinks that I'm going to uh, get aggressive this turn, so I feel like I can block a dodge here. Yeah, arguing with, my th with myself whether, you know, my hand is so bad that he's going to continue throwing me. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Bit of relief there. <laughs> Managed to get a second combat win. I still managed to take damage on that combat win, but um, at least I did only I limit to limit it to one, rather than getting knocked down or anything like that. Power up for a single ace. 1.0 speed is an awkward speed for me right now. Um, usually, when people power up for single ace, they are going for a throw setup. So a seven throw here. <laughs> Yeah, it certainly appears to. Um, a 7 throw here is pretty good, covers against uh, throw dodge. Uh, but I figure I'll go for a 2 instead, it's kind of a... Or I think I, I, I might go for a big throw punish. No, okay, get blown up. But again, I put the 5 out there because I have the Joker as backup. The nice thing is I run to a queen and therefore only I'm going to take 1 damage on this uh, particular combat. And fish two aces, which is hugely valuable. He is going to get speed of the fox. I do have the opportunity to um, unstable power on this next turn. What I realize now is, uh, well, no, I think it would have been lethal if I... So I power up the aces. I don't want to use unstable power quite yet. Uh, I want to keep the sevens because the seven throws are my most likely to actually win combat throws. He has already spent a single seven, uh, but not put too many other throws besides. So I'm feeling okay about that. I pick up another pair. So I've got a nine that I can get more aces back with. Considering what I want to do uh, with my turn, I have a pretty good option of if I feel like a throw is coming. Okay, so I managed to. He blocks on a speed of the fox turn, which gives me um, gives me thoughts about <laughs> what he's got in his hand, uh, which is notably probably not any dodges, um, or he's got something extremely awkward. <laughs> Yeah, we managed to get the moral victory, at least. No power-up. I've still got to chew through 63 hit points. Considering my options here, go for the safer block play, or a dodge play, I should say. I still need to get damage. I need to put him on the ground. And he is stuck on some kind of weird-ass hand. Uh, so that's three queens gone. Pretty unlikely that he's got uh, another one. I have four, five, six into ace, ace, and I think I take this opportunity to do that. Because otherwise, um, I am not going to get back in this game. And doing four, five, six into ace, ace gets me an ace for free, so I only need to buy back a single one to still have AA. Get the cross up, which is phenomenally good. And uh, yeah, immediate four, five, six. For big, 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 big damage. Put him at 33. I am going to end up uh, getting a single ace and probably the six back? No, okay. I leave the six on the table. Uh, yeah, because uh, throw into ace, ace is now lethal. It deals 25 damage, so I don't even need to pick up anything else. I have my lethal set up if I want it. Pick up a third ace. Uh, and actually, no dodges now that I look at this hand. Um, but I don't think, uh, I can't see it right now, but I think the, oh no, no, the four does have a dodge side on it. So I probably should have picked that up. And I just go for broke, go for the throw. If he hits me, 
it's basically over. I need to count on him respecting a bluff, which he has no reason to respect. Uh, and he does not do me that favor. Manages to draw two aces. Yeah, I thought I ha might have a chance of surviving that turn uh, to get another shot at that. But uh, yeah, closes it out with an ace draw, which he later told me that he drew that like as his draw for the turn, and that changed the way he was going to play. He was going to go for either a dodge or, or, or a throw, and uh, I would have taken that game uh, had he not drawn that second ace. Unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I would have had another shot. I had another seven throw that I was willing to put on the table. I had the mix-up of uh, just raw ace-ace-ace, or throw into ace ace for lethal. <laughs> yeah, the throw would have worked if I if he had been able to block. Unfortunate. <laughs> okay, so I get to play the Quince side of uh Quince versus Valerie. I very much like the Valerie side um, of this matchup. She can do very, very, very rude things to him. Um, so it is, I'm going to try to use my uh, stupid bravery <laughs> to try to get into this uh, matchup. I'm going to block a little bit first turn, because I think standard, it's fairly standard opener for Valerie just to attack, I think, into Quince, because uh, Valerie likes to block early, likes to build a hand, needs to get out of... Uh, the kind of awkward seven card, eight card hand that uh, she starts with in the early game. And she's kind of soft to throws a little bit in the early game. Uh, doesn't want to waste normal attacks in the early game either. So we go block block for a little while. This is fine. Um, I mean, I, I know like, it, it seems weird because it seems awkward to give Valerie the opportunity to develop a hand for free without getting pressured. But on the other hand, I don't really have any, like, I don't want to run out of steam as Quince. Uh, that's my entire goal in this early game is just to play in such a way that I end up with enough cards in hand to actually mount continuous pressure. I like that he opens up with a king attack because it means he doesn't get normal draw off of this. And in fact, he only combos into three normals, so he only picks up a single ace, which is also pretty good for me, if he doesn't have any other ace in hand. I strongly suspect, though, uh, that he does, and uh, Valerie's love to open throw uh, when they have ace ace in hand, especially with the single ace pressure uh, to shut things down. I figure the... Uh, the queen attack is pretty good here, and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bit of celebration there. <laughs> Managed to get him with the queen, <laughs> the devil. If queen, then queen. Uh, briefly consider attacking on some damage here. I think I'm going to opt not to and just put him on his back. Right? That seems like the smarter thing to do. Take the knockdown. Or I could tack on 16 additional damage. Yeah, much, much better to just leave, leave her on the ground. Uh, it gives me a possible block setup. It gives me the ability to spin some stuff. I show him the king. Uh, I think the king is likely to um, pull a throw this early because um, Valerie does have a near infinite amount of throws that can contend with king. I briefly consider uh, putting a 10 uh, out there, but I think that probably pushes him uh, not to throw. Uh, he goes for the the block, which is the safer play. It, it's 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 soft to king, um, but from that position, it's not unlikely that I would go for a uh, an attack setup. I do draw the six, so I do have my mix up my my even mix up normal now. Uh, I'm going to probably either, yeah, I should be thinking about either throwing, dodging, or playing the ace raw, uh, depending on what I anticipate him to play like. I think he's going to continue trying to throw, so I put the ace down. Unfortunately, 
Doesn't even need to play Burst of Speed to get around it. I am going to face down here to try to prevent uh, this damage. And I think I feel, I feel like face downing there has a fairly high likelihood of uh, preventing him from following up. It does leave him at 9 cards, um, or 10 cards on the draw, but the important thing is protecting my face. <laughs> it's very crucial not to get exploded. Uh, it's still fairly even life totals. I need to work to get into the vortex without too bad of a life deficit. So go back to blocking. Block a dodge, which is great. I've been pre uh, playing pretty anti-throw so far. I have that going for me, I guess. <laughs> Got a hand full of damage if I can manage to get a uh, something rather off. Get another ace poked out. Very unfortunately, but again, 10 damage. I would much rather take 10 damage than walk that into another two where he's far less likely to respect my face down i draw into a joker which is fantastic and now have the opportunity to absorb a really big uh val combo because it will happen she will eventually find her way in so i've got to consider now do i play a third turn of anti-throw uh, or do i try to cover my options as best i can okay, i get Thrown here. I yeah, I play a face down to make him take the knockdown. Um, so that this way, when he hits me with a attack starter, I'm gonna have the Joker to <clears throat> to get around a whole bunch of that stuff. Thinking about using the ten. Better of it. The other option, of course, is to use it as gold burst, get two aces in hand. That might be might be smarter. Or play a fairly safe jack. Unfortunately, I don't have any uh, odd blocks, which is what I would prefer to block with, because Valerie loves to play the three uh, because you can reduce it um, down to a lower speed. He gets me with the mix-up king. <laughs> yeah, the sadness in my eyes. <laughs> uh, consider playing the, the Joker. I'm probably going to. Again, he is at 10 cards. And pretty much the best combo that I could prevent. Sad that he doesn't uh, play a few more cards into it. Uh, but I do reduce Valerie to a 7-card hand. I prevent a ton of damage, uh, and I go up uh, in hand myself. So that's pretty good. Still got my two sixes. Starting to consider whether I want to throw with the king or dodge with the king. Could be that that last combo took a significant amount out of his hand, and I do manage to catch a block. So I don't get to knock down on this, so I'm going to play the 6 as well. That's going to make my uh, 6 cross up that much more likely to hit later. Cash out 26 damage, or 24 damage, uh, which is pretty good off of a throw. Show him the next king. And uh, I'm considering, yeah, so I'm going to play this on throws to basically set up a hey you can throw me you probably don't have a ton of payoff off of throw anyway um, but i am i believe i am going to end up playing the king here because i strongly suspect that he is going to um, continue respecting my mix-up blocking here is fairly good it's going to put me on lower hand oh okay i didn't actually expect that <laughs> 
I do have a nice uh, dodge punish in my queen there. Yeah, so I do play into uh, the joker. I'm on fairly low hand. Draw into a two. Save me. <laughs> Go for, yeah, I want that 10 if I can manage it to get some more cards. Yeah, so I really, really want the 10, so I think I'm going to end up pushing a jack over to that side. Yeah. So now I have to consider whether I want to play it here. Yeah, so I want to cover the, the possibility that he's going to actually attack into this so I can get few more cards in. Um, if he doesn't and he blocks, then I'm going to be able to get the cross up, um, get the normal draw off of the six, and a fair amount of damage in uh, six, seven jack. 22, putting him within reach. You have the two fours, which I'm going to immediately power up for aces. At this point, I am playing to win combat. If I can manage to hit him with that ace, I can fairly confidently put him in a position where I can take this. So I have the mix-up king. Entirely possible that he respects this, so I play the ace to try to get around it. Unfortunately, <laughs> he does not expect me to play honest. Plays the more conservative uh, three is going to be able to bold strokes here. I am going to bluff as hard as I can. <laughs> Does not respect it. Goes for big damage, but notably, again, goes for the jack plus plus combo, um, which is the uh, more uh, card intensive combo. Puts himself down to four cards in hand and from here, I have a very good shot of taking it. Uh, Quince's combat options aren't great, but he's always got dodges. Um, and his, uh, his cards just deal a lot of damage. You know, he's got seven damage throws, nine damage throws if you want to put the king in there. Uh, I've got the jack. And I actually managed to outspeed this. just take the knockdown because I've got uh, jack and king mix up here I'm probably gonna show him the jack yeah and uh, because the jack is completely protected from um, any combat reveal that he chooses to make um, I basically have a very conservative option that I can play um, and he has very few cards anyway so I go for the throw I think it's fairly likely to land, and even if it doesn't, it's fairly unlikely that he's going to be able to close it out from here. So I take that risk. I try to close it out, but he does in fact find... <laughs> he does in fact find the Joker. <laughs> I believe that's his second one. Yeah, yeah, that is the second Joker played, so... Cursing the devil's luck here. So I got two threes in hand. <laughs> Unless I can't even draw a four to close this out. I need to find some uh, a jack uh, or a uh, a queen ender <laughs> off of normal draw here. I feel it's fairly likely that he's going to throw because uh, there are very few things that I can do that are going to actually kill him here. Uh, so I do manage to poke out a throw. Still at 15 life. I draw a two, which, you know, is not... It's not great um, <laughs> as, you know, I would have preferred to try to close out the game there, but I also draw a second two in the next turn, so I manage to escape my bad hand, and I can put a ton of, of pretty good options and also dodges into my hand. Um, yeah, so I'm picking king, jack, and seven, because seven throw is always a great throw to have. Um, I should probably split the seventh. Yeah, I split the seventh throw and the king just so I have a throw. And I've got the second two so I can, you know, I can set it up so that I can get that seven if I really want to. I'm going to go for a second attempt. Flip another seven so it's guaranteed I'm getting a seven. Just a matter of how I want to 
uh, get it. Yeah, for a second I put both sevens together, it's really stupid. Well, I've given myself a seven, and I'm really thinking about uh, counter-poking a throw here, because I just always expect people to throw me, and luckily the timer runs out and actually plays my three as a dodge. Um, <laughs> so... Yeah, so thank you, thank you, base timer, for giving me my first win of the set. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, we take those. <laughs> so tense, tense, tense game. All right, and now it is back to my my last advantage matchup, Onimar versus Zane. A lot of controversy about this matchup at the moment. Um, one of the uh, strongest uh, Zane players uh, online, uh, very vocal about the fact that this is a strongly, in fact, the uh, most disadvantaged matchup that Zane has. I think I've gone over it in a couple of other videos, but that Onimaru has so many answers to media attacks um, can be uh, quite a nightmare and he also punishes uh, blocks which are um, you know Zane's uh, alternate win condition is just to block forever until he gets max anarchy and then put incredible incredible 50 damage pressure on you from all sides of the game and Onimaru has answers to not only the blocking side but also the anarchy side where he actually has moves that uh, don't even tie with it, but actually beat it outright. Um, and yet there are, you know, there are other players that uh, feel that it's, you know, maybe it's slightly bad for Zane, but it's nowhere near uh, quite that bad. And um, I, I think it's, I think it's fairly solidly uh, six four Onimaru favor. It's a pretty pretty good matchup for Oni. Uh, it's not to say that he can't lose it, but he does have an incredible uh, amount of options. But uh, the the saving grace that Zane has is that his throws, if he if he's willing to throw them, uh, put them out there, uh, can actually lead to quite significant damage. So playing a you know a block or blodge attack range from Onimaru's side for most of the matchup. I'm going to throw as little as possible because he has very, very little payoff um, off of the uh, throw combat wins. Um, but you can you can quite profitably do that. I've blocked two turns in a row and I play single ace, um, put some pressure on, manage to catch a, a very odd queen Probably looking to beat out a uh, five of some kind. In fact, it definitely was played uh, to beat out a five. It also beats um, all of my, you know, uh, my eight and my ten, which are the guard crush normal attacks that I have access to in this matchup. Zane's highest block is an eight block, so it can be quite, quite good. So, 10 card Oni, I have navigated my way into a pretty strong position. I'm going to try to cash out that Clockwork Soldiers. I have another Ace on deck, which is going to be a very good neutral button for me. And I'm fine trading dodges uh, with Zane. Uh, I have the card advantage at this point, um, and he's going to have to... Like, the more I block and dodge, uh, the more he has to work... Uh, and sweat and try to get in there with throws which are going to lose very very hard once I actually push a button. So he dodges an ace, went for the other attach just in case. Flip a joker though so I'm fine with that. He does, uh, he is going to put me on my back with the uh, with the king. That's okay. Um, I have everything I need to proceed from here. I have my fives if I need to. And actually, I'm quite happy to be created and destroyed there. <laughs> um, I didn't have any 
normals. I didn't have any throws, so I was basically just going to block that turn. I, he gives me another Joker, so that's also fine. <laughs> <laughs> so I have the option of just waking up with a uh, with a 10 attack here or an 8 attack to try to get around a block uh, he wisely decides just to go for a media attack just to, to test uh, whether I'm going to play it straight or not put the other joker out there because it's incredibly likely that this is going to prevent a good amount of damage because he just got rid of my other joker and yeah, tons of damage prevented, which is phenomenal for me. Draw another ace, so I've got two aces now. I am knocked down. Uh, I have fairly few options to uh, wake up with. Um, I can put out a single ace and trade with a media attack. Um, I can try to beat a uh, an attack or a, an attempted block with uh, with a ten. Uh, or I can wake up with, you know, actual factual um, face cards. I'm not going to do that last one because I don't have the second jack to pump. Um, and just putting a single king out there is really kind of weak. So I'm, I'm not going to do that unless I absolutely have. Should be tracking uh, what his hand is like. Um... But uh, that king was going to beat pretty much anything that I was going to do that turn, <clears throat> except for block. And I really only had the six to block with. I don't want to risk getting the nine crossed up or thrown. So I'm okay to go back on my back for a little while. I now still have basically the same options as I did last turn, which aren't great. Uh, but they're not terrible either. I can now decide if I really want to to wake up with a jack. Um, with final authority backup. Uh, because even if I lose the Clockwork Soldiers, yeah, so I am going to be able to... I, I spend the King because the Jacks, uh, even without Clockwork Soldiers, I'm going to have uh, 20 damage if I, if I hit it and he doesn't have a Joker. So that's why I'm conserving that. And I was, I was willing, again, I was willing to run that into a block because I'm now set up to, um, uh, to hit with other, king, uh, other aces if I, if, I, uh, if I can hit them. So I've got, I still got all the tools that I need. Uh, from this position, I'm going to play fairly conservatively. I've got him knocked down. I could try to go for a three attack. Just get ten damage in. But fairly even life totals. I go for the dodge, and he uh, reads that and throws me, which is, yeah, very good credit to him. Flips a 9, so he's going to be able to deal some damage here. Gets the 9 and the knockdown. Puts me at 40 health, uh, but he is sitting at 4 cards, and I'm sitting at 9, or 5 to 9. Um, I draw a queen, so I have get off me. If he plays a king, I also have the option of final authoritying that queen if I choose to play it. And uh, he gets a nice block off as a result. Sad for me. Still have two tens. Draw another... Uh, Another guard crush normal in my eight. I'm probably going to keep that for a throw. I have very good neutral buttons in that ace. Instead, put the ten out there. Try to see if he's going to play another block. Instead, catch a second throw. Punish that for 20. Evening up the life totals again. So having played a guard crush normal, I would obviously try to switch it up with doing and do something else, but instead I play just another big guard crush normal. And it finds a five. 
quite happy about. <laughs> Playing the fours out of my hand uh, to hang on to the threes because they can be good cross-up cards. I really need them to be. Draw an eight, so I don't have lethal off of anything except uh, two aces. And I believe I opt to uh, try to dodge into 20 here. <laughs> yeah, when in doubt, smash. <laughs> very accurate, very accurate. Got some good payoff there. Could opt to throw here. Um, double checking, because <laughs> it's been a while since I've played Oni, uh, how much damage they deal on pump, but it is not enough to kill, and I have the opportunity to go for lethal here, so I'm going to try to take it. Plays a just stay away from me king, face down, but I've got enough tools in hand that I can safely play these two aces to try to go for lethal, and close it out as he doesn't have the joker. So even if he had uh, had it and we continue the game, I have the dodges I need. I've got two eights. Um, I have another face card. I'd probably hang on to that jack for as long as possible. Okay, so again, once more versus Setsuki. <laughs> this time with a character I'm more comfortable playing this matchup uh, against or as. Uh, Fra has been playing, uh, he opened the last game with throw, so I'm considering whether he's actually going to do that or not. I opt to go for the block anyway, do get thrown from my trouble, uh, but I didn't want to risk, uh, normal drawing into, uh, sorry, even if I normal drew another, um, uh, another normal attack, it wouldn't be enough to get two aces, and I really, really want to string um, three normals together. So I, I opt to play it there because I have a, a chance of drawing the uh, the normal I need. I don't end up getting that, <laughs> uh, so I'm actually going to leave this combo on the table because there's there's just not. I don't see all that much value in getting a single ace as Valerie in this position. And I keep drawing face cards, which I are exactly the opposite of what I need right now. Um, I need to get my engine going, and I need that the engine gets going by getting two aces in hand. So I play another anti-throw attack manage to win <laughs> at this point i've got big normals um he's very unlikely to have an actual um an actual joker in this position he's probably just playing to get out of an awkward hand uh, so i do get myself an ace and actually draw <laughs> the second ace i needed so i'm rewarded for my uh, my greediness <laughs> I am no nobody with the the choice uh, quotes from chat. Go for the uh, cover everything play with the king. Get dodged. Hold my breath to see if a second uh, ace comes out, but it doesn't. So just just nine. He does get Speed of the Fox off. And I have a hella awkward hand. I think it's fairly likely he's going to play a dodge here, considering I have uh, two aces, or one known ace uh, on hand. Play the block. So uh, yeah, the thing I was incredibly worried about was getting that thrown, uh, because that would have been just awful for me. <laughs> just the worst. <laughs> So now I have a block I feel safe playing. 
Uh, I think it's fairly likely he's going to be playing a, a block or dodge range here. Just to try to get a round of aces. Or even just play the queen uh, to punish my ace attempt. I consider playing the jack because it ties with twos. Get undercut with a jack. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> try to smoke bomb. Get some cards out of his hand. Uh, so this lets me keep my joker because it's not going to deal unless he drew you know two more aces and considering the fact that he's already gotten uh, you know one out of the way it's very very unlikely that he does so he deals me 17 which is not great it's not ideal I prefer not to have that happen uh, but i do have the joker in hand so i can lock my way out of this situation I want to try to block a dodge here. This is going to keep him on fairly low hand, and I get my wish. I don't have any throws, so I can't. That's just not an option for me. It's a single ace in hand, so he's probably got doubles. Finally, draw a throw, uh, but it's a crappy one, and I don't have any tens left in hand. I do, however, have dodge into 21. And I have the hand size to be able to, uh, to deal with that. I have played fairly uh, block happy so far. So I don't think it's unreasonable to try to expect or catch a throw here. Um, I don't, but again, I walk into a queen. I've got the joker back up, so I'm fine with this. I am going to end up playing it, even though he's only got uh, four cards in hand, just because I want to prevent, if he had drawn the other ace, uh, I don't want to give him 17 damage for free. So, unfortunately, kind of wastes the uh, joker there a little bit. So he's got a bag of tricks. I know he's going to pick up a 10, because he needs to deal with uh, the possibility of bursts of speed. He picked up a queen, a king, and a 10. And what I really strongly suspect is that he's either going for a throw or a dodge here. Throw because the thing I'm thinking is, oh, okay, well, you know, you've got queen, therefore you've got pressure off of that. He ends up throwing with the 10, uh, which means I don't even need to burst of speed it, which is fantastic. I'm just going to get the aces in uh, to get that damage for free. Even up our life totals. Take a slight life lead. So now I know he still has the queen and a king in hand. I do have two bursts of speed. I have the possibility of dodge into 21. I consider the queen. Uh, just to hedge against everything that isn't queen from him. But I think it's far more likely he just plays queen here. Or throws. Because he still has queen pressure. And he does catch me with the other 10. Very, very unfortunate. I had a chance to close it out there. Put the face down, just in case. But of course, he's not going to respect that. Puts me at 13. I do have lethal in hand. And draw a joker, which is super, super, super good here. What I probably should do is go for a throw. Uh, but I opt to go for an attack instead, just to cover throw more thoroughly. And keep burst of speed in my hand. Either one would have lost. Uh, but I do manage to get the second joker off. He's almost certainly going to be able to dump his hand here as he gets two free... Uh... Oh yeah, I start panicking because my system is showing it's loading for whatever reason. Okay, things settle down. Yeah, he is able to dump and he's able to put me on my back as well, which is very, very unfortunate. Uh, check how many queens he has. Just the one queen played, yeah, I... I like I basically could have 
sworn that he had more gone, but he had he got them back with the seven, so now I don't even have the option of pretending he doesn't have queen in hand. Gotta very seriously consider it. So he has queen pressure. Uh, it's often very good just to play the queen here. Uh, I have no possibility of dodging, and I have only a single dodge in my hand, actually. Uh, and even the dodge isn't going to be lethal at this point. You need to bring him down 6 health for that to be real. And I actually spend it. I should probably just spend a uh, jack, to be honest. But I figure I have lethal off of the 2. Uh, but he hasn't played any jokers yet. Uh, so I think I end up... I either play ace-ace or I respect this. I can't remember... Exactly what happens. I think I respect it. There's no way it's not a joker. But yeah, play into it anyway, just not to get him let him get away with it for free. Unfortunately he does put uh some more fuel into his tank. But I have dodge into 44 off of two dodges. Uh if I can get away with them. I've got to think about what I fear. Do I fear a throw? And I really should have feared the queen. <laughs> and that's both jokers gone, so... Or I think it's both jokers gone. And uh, he does clean things up. Takes the, uh, takes the lead again. As we move into next game. So this is going to be Grave Menelker. I'm playing Grave. Fairly comfortable and confident in the matchup. Take a moment to uh, meditate. <laughs> Settle down just slightly. Got to remember what I'm afraid of in this matchup and what I'm not. So, depending on my opening hand is how I'm going to respond to the possibility of a 7th throw. And right now I've got pretty much nothing to lose by blocking. If he 7th throws me here, uh, he knows I've got a garbage hand, um, but, you know, that's it. I managed to get the block off, take some chip, but it's fine. The only issue is I don't really have anything good to show him. Uh, I can show him the 2, but it's unlikely he's going to respect that. I could show him a 7, but I don't want to really risk a 7. I think I end up showing him a 10. No, I do show him the 2. Because if he doesn't think I'm going to attack him... I mean, it's very unlikely that I'm dodging here. But it could be a setup for me to uh, block... And I drew a 5, so I have the... I have the dream, I have the, the grave straights. I can get two aces right now and start pressuring uh, True Power of Storms if I hit. Instead, I go for the throw. Yeah, it's very little reason for him not to block there. It's safe against both sides of the real mix-up. It's safe even against the side of the more conservative just block here strategy. I draw a single ace, so if I hit that straight, um, I, I have True Power of Storms. I've got him knocked down, so I'm going to go for the 2. I should probably block in this position. Nelker does not want to get crossed up. So playing the Queen is very, very conservative from him, and I do get lit up for it. Uh, it is a Red Queen, though, so I don't get punished too badly. And I only take the 8, because... Um, Menelker is one of those characters that really likes... I mean, he has ways because of his... Um, because of the way his uh, black face cards work uh, of drawing into stuff uh, through means... Or, or replenishing his hand through means other than normal draw and uh, drawing for the turn. But um, he still very much wants to build a hand. 
And I end up letting him do that for a little while. I draw the second ace, so at this point I can power up either my 10s or my 7s um, to have true power of storms very, very early. I'm going to keep my 7s though, so if I am powering up I'm going to do it with the 10s. But now I, start, I have to start thinking about protecting myself from uh, uh, from Bonecracker. So I do get, end up going for the throw here. I choose not to face down. I probably should. Uh, if he has 10s in hand, he may be tempted just to let me uh, play the, uh, the Joker, if it is a Joker, and then banish that. On the other hand, it could just put me lower on cards. So he ends up dealing 29 damage and still stays on 6 cards in hand. So very significantly evening up the life totals. Considering playing the 7 for its ability, draw another 7, which is great for me. Just want to get a peek. Yeah, so his hand is really not great. Uh, he's got a red king. He's got he's got the Joker. That's really the key uh, that I want to get around. So he has he has a ways to poke out my throw if I want to throw him. But on a hand like that, it's probably still better for him just to block. So I opt to go for a ten throw in this position. He throws me with the eight. I don't. Oh, okay. No, I end up blocking. What I should be thinking is like, if even if he throws me through eight, or if he hits me with the two, it's really not that much damage he can do. He can empty his entire hand with two into king, pump, pump, ace, and then just have a joker and be ridiculous. But that leaves me at twenty health, and him at nothing, and me with true power storms, fairly close behind. So I throw him with the ten the next turn. I don't want to let him build too hard. And uh, I consider tagging on the aces and just starting to use them for uh, combo fodder uh, rather than um... <laughs> I have two sixes so I can power up for two power storms. I can try to hit confirm two, three, four, which is another possibility here. I believe I elect just to block. I don't want to block. Yeah, I don't want to block even with the uh, with the ten, uh, just because it's another throw, and I'm, you know, I've already spent two of my sevens. Um, I'm rapidly running out, <laughs> starting to get dry. So I have I have the dream. I have two power of storms here. I have another 7, and I draw an 8, so I have the possibility of peeking at his hand again. I opt to go for a throw. I expect him to... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, other, the other problem here is I don't want to be too hasty to throw with an 8, in case he does Bonecracker me. So I do go for the 7 instead. He ends up poking that out. And I'm really, really sad because if I had had the dodge there... That was pretty much guaranteed uh, True Power of Storms. So he does end up putting the king on the table. He's going to pump twice. Oh no, pump once. Okay, no, pump twice. So he gets another huge amount of damage, puts me at 20. At this point I realize, oh god, I'm actually at 20 hit points and I need to close this out. So I need to hit True Power of Storms to make this work. Unfortunately, I think he's going to play defensive here. So I have queens. I can play it raw, but I hate playing it raw, and he knows that, almost certainly. I believe I try to dodge into it here, and he ends up blocking it. Yeah. He's playing defensive. That's a fairly good signal that I have it. <laughs> So even more likely that he's going to play defensive on this next turn, so I opt to go for a throw. Pretty sure I opt to go for the 9. And then I'll just take the knockdown. 
Or no. Okay, no, I cover against as many throws as I can with the eight. I'm just going to take the knockdown here. I want to hit, I need to hit True Power of Storms to get back in this game. I have the possibility of two cross up. I have the possibility of dodge into True Power of Storms. I drew another king. So I can now throw into King King for 21. Yeah, he queens me. But he he's played a, a reversal or a reversal alike um after every knockdown. <laughs> you would think I would learn. But the way to the way to hit the the way to hit this man <laughs> is by playing those aces after a dodge. <laughs> so I am at six health. An awkward spot. He needs to hit me with literally anything. I feel like from this position, he's probably going to dodge. <laughs> yeah, please hit me. Please try to hit me, but no. Playing defensive. But, uh, yeah. Draw Jack, which doesn't really do me any good. I rotate those aces. Not quite ready to put them on the table. I feel like from this position of strength, a dodge is very likely, so I go for the throw. Yeah, thank God. <laughs> hit him with the, the, the kings. Even things out. So now I no longer need to hit two power of storms. I just need to find 28 damage. So I can afford to just put it out there. And I'm going to elect to do that now because I drew the joker. Um, and I have queens on backup. He's already played, I think, two or three queens by now. Um, so it's fairly likely that my queen is a dominant attack. Only thing this, this True Power of Storms loses to is that dodge. Uh, and I have the Joker backup, so I'm, I'm fine with, with this exchange. I like to throw away the Jack... I, I'm not going to use that. <laughs> I'm not going to get a chance to do anything with that. Draw into a bunch of butt throws. Get another throw. It's fine. Good. Starting to get there. I can't afford to trade with a uh, queen because that'll kill me outright. But again, he's played enough of them now that fairly unlikely that he has any left. So I hit him with one, get him to 18. I could have powered up there uh, to have... Uh, to have lethal off of throw. He gets to banish one of my queens, making it that much less likely that I have one in my hand, so I'm going to immediately play the next one. Either that or dodge into queen. Or dodge into th uh, throw if I, if I do dodge. So I can't kill off of a throw. That's weighing my combat options as well. If I still had the jack, or if I'd powered up for an ace, I could have. Managed to nab a dodge, because again, still, still being very safe. Put him on the ground and get the other joker out of the way, which is fantastic. And now I have the queen. Yeah, so I power up the aces. Because what I'm going for is either dodge into lethal, or cross up attempt into lethal. The one time he doesn't reversal me is <laughs> all the way at the end. <laughs> so I had a, uh, a one in three chance of, uh, <laughs> of getting him there. Still have the queen. And again, 
Powering up the ace also makes him less likely to think that I have the queen. Um, not that he has much of anything. Yeah, and I managed to catch a last backdash. I believe he had actually drawn uh, his seven on that last turn and elected not to play it. And I managed to steal that game from him <laughs> from, from an incredible life deficit. <laughs> Okay, so last matchup, yeah, take a quick break before I proceed to it. Uh, last matchup is, once again, Midori versus Persephone. Uh, I lucked this out in the fight against Bob last time. Um, not an easy matchup by any means. There are definite stretches of this match where Midori just does not have answers. And uh, Barrier Soul is incredibly powerful uh, against Midori. Uh, so long as uh, she can prevent him from getting a 2, uh, she basically doesn't have to fear his quad ace super. Um, and that is, I mean, holding back until you can get your quad ace super online and then quad ace supering people uh, through the ground is um, a pretty good strategy. <laughs> <laughs> so we go to the ace match, but I I am not I'm not extremely confident that I'm going to take this match. So I open up with a kind of an awkward hand. Uh, elect a block and am nicely rewarded. Thank goodness. He runs a queen into me. I draw my fourth queen. <laughs> so okay, good. We've got we've got some tools. The only problem is on knockdown and looking down the barrel of. Uh, on your knees, queen is meaningless. Uh, it is slower than on your knees, and so it's just not going to do it. I mean, you're not going to catch Persephone dodging in this matchup. It's just not going to happen. He puts me on the ground. I opted to go just for... Try to find 12 damage there. Um, I think fairly rapidly I'm going to realize that um, Frau Rolo does, does not want to get thrown right now. Uh, so I should just... Sit back, block a whole bunch, and build some hand. So he doesn't get much of value. He gets a single dodge, which I believe he's going to get rid of as soon as he can. And he gets an ace, which he's also going to get rid of, I think, as soon as he can. Yeah. I have to spend resources out of my hand, making myself more exploitable to get out of this. My choices really are wake up queen or block. I like to go wake up queen because it's unlikely that he has uh, what he needs here. And uh, stuff a jack. Managed to get 10 damage on the board. And again, Persephone has 75 health, so uh, just kill her. Just kill her as fast as you can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> happy that I have all of my queens at least if I can find any tens or any twos I will be extremely happy but even a 1.2 reversal option here is pretty good and yeah so again considering uh, is he is he does he want to get thrown he doesn't he really doesn't at this point so I'm gonna keep blocking he's gonna get rid of cards that I that I would want in my hand but whatever So I'll just build. He gets rid of a 6 uh, that he had in prison because I blocked with a 6. He doesn't want to allow me uh, any chances, any free opportunities to um, build a hand. And again, he, he doesn't want to be thrown. So I need to, yeah, nod to myself, relax, step back. Block. Block some more. 
And this is real bad. <laughs> this is immediately terrible. Uh, because he gets uh, ace-ace in hand. What I really should do in this position is play the queen. Um, it loses to ace-ace, but it is the only thing it loses to. And it covers nicely against throw. Which uh, he is going to definitely hit me with. Because I do not want to get Mistress's Commanded. Midori is very soft to Mistress's Command. Um, so I play scared of AA and he knocks me down. <clears throat> and now, of course, now AA is actually much more of a threat because if he lands it or crosses up into it, uh, he's going to get four cards back. So I've got him on a six card hand. I need to be playing in a way that denies him uh, the opportunity to, to build hand. So last turn I should have played queen, and this turn I should have played queen. Because he's still on six cards. Even if he lands raw ace-ace and beats a queen here, um, it's just not as good as uh, it would be uh, if he's able to just throw me from this position. But I play a little bit too conservative and get thrown. And so he gets four cards for free. He doesn't need to follow up at all. And elects not to. And that pretty much tells me exactly... <laughs> I mean, I'm not thinking of it now, but um, in retrospect, that means I really definitely should have woken up Queen there. Even if Ace-Ace had beaten it, uh, that would have been fine. So he gets some more tools, and more importantly, he gets some more power-up fodder in here. And yeah, I've got uh, a fair amount of pretty good cards in that uh, prison, so I'm going to elect to break that, just because I don't want any more dodges. I'm, I'm going to need one dodge in the late game. <laughs> That's all I need, which is also why I'm not playing that 10 yet, uh, because it may be the only dodge that I get. So now I expect ace-ace. <laughs> I have the joker uh, to defend myself for any more damage, at least, if he tries to hit confirm into it. Uh, but again, he's going to play conservative. He gets the cross up off. He's been denying me my, uh, my even blocks. I am going to play joker there just to prevent 16. I can't afford to go too much lower on health. But he now has looped three knockdowns, uh, which is the nightmare scenario. He's going to have all of the cards he could ever want. He gives me an even block, which is good for me. Uh, but not as good as a yeah, 11, 12 card hand Persephone. <laughs> With the ability to get aces back. Oh, it's it's a nightmare. The struggle is real. The struggle is very, very real. So those three, I mean, again, start of the game with four queens, and it just does not matter. So I'm at, 40, I'm at 50 life. He's at 65. I mean, I haven't hit him yet, uh, but he's at 65 health. Yeah, now, so the turn I decide to put the queen on the table. <laughs> There's all sorts of bad, bad feelings happening right now. Yeah, just gets a ton of cards back in his hand. He's going to have ace-ace again. And I'm back in the mix-up. Do I wake up with another queen to try to catch something? Is he going to just play ace-ace again? It's rough. It's, rough. it's a rough time. Bury your soul. 
Yeah, gets a Joker, gets another Jack. It's it's bad, real bad down here. <laughs> super real, super super real bad, and awful. So I I always have the option of just wake up super duff if I feel a throw coming. Uh, but it's a little too risky, so instead I get around to two. I don't have to play my ten. Again, I hang on to that dodge. If I can manage to draw a two, I can threaten insane reach <laughs> with this character. So it's just a matter of getting a two and then being standing with four aces in hand. And there we go, we find it. So I have a pair of threes and nothing else to power up. So I've got to find some way of doing that. I'm going to stall for time with queen. Undercut a single ace and let that rock. Put him at 45. I should have considered playing, yeah, 45. If I hit him with the eight, puts him at 37. No, so that still would have been, would not have been lethal to three aces. So no reason to, uh, to do that. Yeah, I go into dragon form because I'm not gonna get, it's not gonna get any better <laughs> from here on out. I have a single dodge. And I am actually going to block my way into that last ace. I think it's fairly likely he's going to attack me. And I get lucky and catch a queen as a kind of all-purpose please don't play a button move. I'm going to grab the ace because I now have lethal in hand. And uh, yeah, so this we've found our victory condition. <laughs> Um, we just have to, we just have to make it happen. So my mix up is raw final dragon buster or dodge. I think it's fairly likely that again, I, I picked up the ace and not a dodge. So it's fairly likely that he thinks I have one and it's far, far safer for me to dodge from this position. Uh, so I land final dragon buster. He is on an eight card hand. What I should recall at this point is that it's not a true eight card hand and he bluffs me. Um, what I should remember is that he went down to like four cards um, and most of her draw, most of the cards in her hand have been recurls. So I really should have just played both of those aces and collected my win. And uh, now I'm back in the mix up and I don't have lethal in hand this turn. Or I do, I have to do it by 8 attacking though, or 5 attacking. Um, and unlike Rook and Troc, there's no reason for him to play a 5 or a 6 attack. Uh, so I go for the unexpected second final Dragon Buster and get hit with a 2. And unfortunately, I have both Jokers in the discard and he is going to find lethal off of this. Just barely. And I go out of the tournament. So. Too, too bad. Um, could have had it. Could have had it and let it slip through my fingers. So lesson learned, but it's not, it's not unreasonable for him to have had the, uh, the other joke, a single joker. He hasn't played a single one at this point. Um, so, you know, I, I, I was fighting back some salt, fighting back some salt at the end of this. It was tough. Especially, I had to check if he actually had the joker. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, um, well, well played by Frau Rolo. Great, great player. Love playing him all the time. Really friendly guy. Really, really smart player. Uh, really put me through my paces. It's, it's great to have uh, a strong opponent to face, somebody who challenges you. So I will eventually come out ahead on one of these games. I swear to you, Fra, I will find you. We will, I will triumph. <laughs> but today was not that day. So thank you everybody for watching. As always, if you're interested in getting into Yomi, 
uh, have links to all of the different ways that you can get involved, either online through the different platforms like the browser version, Steam version, the iOS version, um, or in person. Uh, links to Serling Games uh, store where you can buy the actual physical copies uh, of the game if you want to. So thank you for watching. That's the end of my Persephone's Pick Your Poison tournament run, unfortunately. Uh, but there is much more Yomi coming your way. I've got some IYL matches that I've recorded and haven't had a chance to commentate over. We will be doing that shortly, and then I will post those as soon as they're ready. So thank you all for watching. Until next time, enjoy yourself some Yomi.